Thank you. Hello, thank you. Thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, and Mark, congratulations. This is an amazing event. I mean, I'm just so inspired. I'm, I'm a little, yes. I am, uh, I mean, I'm sweaty. I look terrible, because I and I probably have a little Diet Coke on me, because I was at the Diet Coke in Mentos. Um, it is just so much fun, and I can't believe, and, and he's my inspiration, actually, for my event that I'll tell you about in just a little bit. Uh, so I am, uh, I'm gonna talk about a project I'm working on that actually involves the entire world, all seven billion humans, and uh, it takes place here at the New York Hall of Science. Uh, but before that, I'll, I'll give you just a little bit of context. Mark had mentioned uh, I'm a writer, and uh, I like to, as a writer, dive into my subjects and almost become a human guinea pig and really immerse myself in them. Uh, so I work at Esquire magazine as one of my jobs. And uh, for instance, like 10 years ago, I decided to outsource my life to India. Uh, so I hired a team of people in Bangalore, India to do everything for me. So they answered my phones and they answered my emails. They argued with my wife for me, uh, which was the best month of my life, because I could just sit back and watch movies and read books. Um, another article after that was on a, a movement called Radical Honesty. And this is a movement where they believe that you should never lie. But more than that, they say, whatever's on your brain should come out of your mouth. No filter. So I tried that for a month. That was the worst month of my life. I don't recommend that at all. Uh, but it was still fascinating, and I took a lot away from it. I, uh, as Mark mentioned, I wrote a book about the Bible. This one came about because I had no religious background as all, at all. As I say in the book, I'm Jewish, but I'm Jewish in the same way the Olive Garden is Italian. So uh, not very. But yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the freedom. Fantastic. I'm actually okay right here, unless you got a problem. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll move this out of my face. Uh, so I decided one way to learn about the Bible would be to live it, to actually dive in, see what it says, and try to follow all the rules. So I got a board of spiritual advisors, so rabbis, ministers, and priests, and scholars, and I wrote down every rule in the Bible that I could find. Uh, it turned out to be quite a long list. Uh, there's the stack of Bibles I read. And I wanted to follow all the rules without picking and choosing to see which ones made my life better, which ones maybe made my life weirder. So I followed the, the famous ones, the Ten Commandments, love your neighbor, be uh, fruitful and multiply. And I was fruitful and multiplied. I had twin boys during the project. So I take my projects very seriously. Uh, and the Bible has dozens of others that are less well-known. I wanted to follow those, too. So the Bible says, you cannot shave the corners of your beard. I didn't know where the corners were, so I just let the whole thing grow. And I had quite some topiary on my chin by the end of this experiment. So there I am at the end. Uh, as you can imagine, I spent a lot of time at airport security. Uh, and here I am. This is, I didn't dress like this all the time, but uh, sometimes when I really got into it, I would go out there and try that out. Um, and that was a fascinating experiment. Uh, I stopped wearing the robe, I shaved my beard, but I've taken away a lot from that uh, experience. Uh, now, my new project, I decided, uh, would be about more than just me going through the experiment. I want to bring everyone with me. And it actually started about six months ago. I got an email from a man who had read one of my books. And he said, you don't know me, but I'm your 12th cousin. And he said, I have a family tree with 80,000 people on it, including you, Karl Marx, and several European aristocrats. Uh, at first, I thought, OK, he's going to ask me to wire $10,000 to his Nigerian bank account. <laughs> but, but it turned out uh, he wasn't. He was actually legit. He has built a family tree that 
has 80,000 people on it, and he's part of this new breed of genealogists. I always thought of genealogy as sort of the very staid and, and dusty and proper, but it's actually going through this fascinating revolution. It's very DIY, very internet-based, so it's right in the Maker Faire uh, uh, bailiwick, and it's happening partly because of DNA testing and partly because of the internet. Nowadays, you have these family trees that are like the Wikipedia of family trees. You put up your family of like, say, 50 people, and what these do is that if you, if you have an A.J. Jacobs, that's my name on, on, on my tree, and there's an A.J. Jacobs on another tree, these will search and find the link, and you can combine your tree with another. So then you just keep on combining and combining, and then you, you end up with these monster mega family trees. I thought 80,000 was a lot. Right now, the family tree I'm on has 78 million people. It's up to 78 million since this uh, came out. 78 million people connected by blood or marriage, sometimes both. Uh, this is in uh, 160 uh, countries, all seven continents, including Antarctica. There are scientists in Antarctica on my family tree. It includes uh, my cousin Gwyneth Paltrow. She has no idea I exist, but we are officially cousins, as you can see, uh, just like 14 steps away. There's my uh, cousin Barack Obama, who is my, he is um, officially my aunt's fifth great aunt's husband's brother's wife's seventh great grandson, so practically my older brother. Uh, and of course, there's cousin Kevin Bacon, uh, who is, uh, he's not quite six degrees away yet, but he's more like 20, it looks like 28 degrees. Um, so, I, and I'm not boasting. All of you have these famous relatives, because the point is, we are all related. And by the way, 75 million is just the start. Uh, in a decade or so, it's, it's probable that we will have one super tree that will have all seven billion members of the human family on it, which is just extraordinary to me. You know, this is this idea of the, the family of man, of humankind, we've heard since we were kids. Now, for the first time, we've got the technology to show how we are all related. Um, so I said to myself, uh, I want to make this the subject of my next book. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sort of the biographer of the world family tree. And it's my dream, I admit it's a little idealistic, but that when we realize how we are all related, we'll treat each other with a little more kindness. Uh, now it is a little bit controversial, not, not all genealogists love this. Uh, one of the concerns is accuracy. How accurate are these mega trees? And the answer is it depends. Some branches of the world family tree, very well documented, uh, marriage licenses, census records. Other parts are a little less well documented. I'm actually optimistic about the accuracy issue. I, I think the more people who join, the more documents we'll get, the more accurate it'll become. You remember like 15 years ago when Wikipedia just first started and everyone's like, oh, you know, who's got, you can just say like Paul Revere was a, a funk, singer from the 70s, uh, but it's actually turned out to be remarkably accurate. Not 100%, but remarkably accurate. So I believe the same thing will happen with these trees. Now some people say, you know, it's kind of cool that you can connect the entire human race in one tree, but is it important? Why should we care? And I do believe it is important, and I'll give you a couple of quick reasons. The first uh, is uh, these are, the, by the way, the websites that I'm, I'm working with, My Heritage Genie and uh, Wikitree. These are, these are sort of the Wikipedia versions. The sci one reason I think it's important is scientific value. There's a group of scientists at MIT right now studying these millions of uh, connections to see how diseases are passed down uh, and traits. So it's an unprecedented history of the the human uh, species. Uh, second, I think it brings history alive in a way I've never seen before, like uh, my son who is there. Hello, Jasper. Uh, but my sons, uh, I'll tell them that they're related to these historical figures like Albert Einstein. And now Albert Einstein, he's not just some 
dead white guy with weird hair. He's Uncle Albert. Uh, and they want to know more about him. Uh, it's not all good news, of course. I am, uh, uh, I'm also found, I found out I'm related to Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial killer. Uh, but I will say that's through my wife's side. So <laughs> I just want to point that out. She's not here, so uh, I feel safe mentioning that. Um, the other uh, reason I, I love it is the, just it, it reinforces the interconnectedness of all humans alive. Uh, we were all descended from the same ancestors. And I don't believe the, the biblical version of Adam and Eve 5,000 years ago, but scientists talk about the mitochondrial Eve and the Y chromosomal Adam. So there really was an Adam and Eve, uh, but they were more like 100,000 to 300,000 years ago. And we all have a little bit of their DNA in us. And they are all of our great, 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 if I said that about 5,000 times, grandparents. Uh, and there's a fascinating study by an MIT stati statistician who shows that the farthest cousin you have on Earth, even in Borneo, wherever, in Peru, is probably about a 70th cousin, and probably a lot closer. Uh, so I love this idea that we really are all cousins. And uh, I was on the radio talking about this, and a woman called in, and she, she was moved to New York from Ireland, and she was saying how alone she felt because she didn't have any family, and then she's like, oh, uh, you know what, now I realize that everyone here in New York is my family, and uh, she felt better, and I, she called me Cousin AJ, which I loved. Um, I'm hoping the world family might make us a little bit of kinder people. Uh, I know that, you know, the people from the KKK are not going to automatically start befriending African Americans, but I hope it will nudge them towards more tolerance when they realize just how close we are. And I'll give you one trivial example. This is admittedly a silly example, but it worked for me. Um, you know the TV personality, Judge Judy? I always found her incredibly obnoxious and abrasive. Then I found out she's my eighth cousin, and I, it shifted my perspective. I was like, you know what? Maybe she's not so bad. She, like, underneath that, she's like a sweetheart under that bluster. And, and that's silly, I know. But I've heard from these hundreds of other researchers who are working on the world family tree. They've had a similar shift in perspective on people in their lives. You realize, oh, they are my family. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and you look at history. A lot of the terrible things that happened over history were because one group felt that another group was subhuman. Uh, and you can't do that anymore. We share 99.9% .9 of our DNA. We're not only the same species, we are literally the same family. The final reason, uh, oh, well this one, uh, I'll go back a little. <laughs> the final reason uh, I, I love the global family tree is, is because it's very democratizing. So, uh, you know, there's sometimes an elitist strain when people talk about family history. I'm descended from Mary Queen of Scots and you're not, so you can't join my country club. Well now, thanks to these new amazing tools, everyone can claim to be descended from Mary Queen of Scots, sometimes through marriage, but still. So we all have royalty in our background, and uh, it just levels the playing field. It's, it's the most fascinating time in history for a family, I think, because in the last 20 years, the, the definition of family has changed more than it has in hundreds of years. You've got gay marriage, uh, open adoption, sperm donorship, surrogacy, and I actually like this. I, I'm for it. I'm for a more inclusive definition of family. Uh, I have a, my eighth cousin, uh, four times removed, is named Hillary Clinton, and she says uh, it takes a village, and I really believe that. So the more people we have in the village, the better. Now, uh, so I have, I have, I'm loving this idea that we're all related, and I thought, why not travel around the country and try to meet all of my cousins? So that's one thing I've been doing. I went around, uh, I met President George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush, uh, uh, and I called up, I said to their chief of staff, you know, I am their cousin. Would you mind if I came and took a picture of them and interviewed them? And they said, yeah, 
Sure, I guess so. Uh, you know, you're a cousin. I'm, a, of course, a, I live in New York, so I have to be a Democrat. But, uh, but the point of this is to go beyond those tribes of Democrats and Republican and, uh, and religion and just embrace all of humanity. Now, I can't see, I, I kind of forget what the next slides are, so it's going to be a surprise to me as it is to you. So let's see what we got. OK, now, yeah, so I met this guy is an actor who played Harry Potter. He's my cousin. Uh, here are some other comedians who are my cousin, uh, some actors. Um, Steven Pinker of Harvard, and he's actually, he's actually kind of close. There's Chrissy Teigen, who is a uh, Sports Illustrated supermodel. I felt it was very important to find out how I was related to her so I could meet her. Uh, and Abraham Lincoln, of course. So you get all these histo historical figures. Let's see what the next slide is. I'm, it's exciting. OK, yeah, we can go back one. Um, I'll get to that in one second. So I thought, with all of these cousins, I have thousands, millions of cousins, what should I do? What should I do with this information? And that's when I decided I want to hold the biggest, most inclusive, most entertaining family reunion in history. And that's what I'm doing next summer right here at the New York Hall of Science. And you guys are all invited. Because you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love it. And I want you to come because you know you are all cousins. And and I actually I'm holding it here because of the Maker Fair. I came here to speak last year about something else, 3D printed food that I did an article on. But I was blown away by the Maker Fair, and I was like, okay, I want to do the Maker Fair, but with cousins instead of makers. So that's what it's going to be. There's going to be all sorts of speakers talking about family history and, and family stories. Um, I'm, high, I'm in the midst of hiring Sister Sledge to sing We Are Family that we can all sing along to. Morgan Spurlock, who's the documentary maker who did uh, Super Size Me, where he ate all the McDonald's for a month. He's making a movie out of it. There's going to be um, activities, a scavenger hunt. Uh, there's going to be uh, the world's largest tug of war, because you know you got to have some of that family reunion uh, stuff, and and some and a lot of wonderful speakers, including uh, uh, Nick Kroll, who uh, you saw was my cousin. He's a comedian. I don't know if you know but Scott Simon, who is an NPR host, wrote a wonderful book about adoption. He adopted two Chinese girls. And uh, so he's going to talk about adoption, because I do believe, as I said, in the most inclusive definition of family, and that uh, you know, it's not all about DNA. The, the, the idea of family is about inclusiveness. So uh, I honestly, I am, I'm serious about inviting you. Right now, uh, we have 26,000 people on the mailing list, uh, and I'd love to include you guys. And I would love to figure out how you guys are related to me, because you are. And you know, you know, even if you have a totally different background, I can still figure it out with the help of these hundreds, literally hundreds, of amazing volunteers who are helping me build this tree. So what you do is just go to this website I have, and you send in your grandparents' names and their birth dates, if you have them, any famous relatives you have, and then these amazing, wonderful volunteers search to see how you're related to the big family tree. So even if you don't care about me, I know only a tiny percentage care about me, but, that, but if you get on this tree, you're related to every president, you're related uh, to Napoleon, to Gwyneth Paltrow, whoever you want. So you can go to the cocktail party and say, oh, my cousin Gwyneth. And uh, so it is, it is tremendous fun. And I've actually had a lot of fun reaching out to people, meeting new cousins, some of them are a little skeptical. There's a lot of, you know, is this a scam? What are you trying to pull? You know, what are you trying to, you know, are you asking me for money? I'm like, no, this is all for building a world family tree, uh, throwing this event, which will be a fundraiser for Alzheimer's. So any proceeds will go to these two great Alzheimer's organizations, which may be on a slide here. No, they're not. <laughs> there's, there's a picture of. Uh, there, yeah, those Alzheimer's organizations. Uh, the other way you can join the big family 
is through DNA testing. That's the other revolution in family history going on right now. It's fascinating. You know, there are all these services, 23andMe, uh, the Genographic Project, the National Gene Geographic is doing, uh, Family Tree DNA, and you spit into a tube and you send it off, and they will send you back a list of literally hundreds, sometimes thousands of people who share enough DNA to be officially qualified as your cousins. So I did this, and I found some interesting cousins, uh, including my wife. So there is my wife. <laughs> I had her taken. My wife, Julie, is my distant cousin. So I thought that was interesting. She was a little freaked out. Uh, but as you can see, uh, my son is, uh, is, uh, has no extra limbs. He's, uh, he's in great shape. Uh, and, um, and we're not really the exception, because everyone, as, uh, as I mentioned, is married to your cousin. If you're married, you're married to your cousin. It may not be your fourth or fifth cousin, maybe your 60th cousin, but we're all one big family. So uh, I am super excited about this event and this cause, and uh, I just hope it'll be half as fun as Maker Faire, uh, which is my inspiration. So uh, with that, I will, there's some pictures to show people what, what it could be like. I actually show the Maker Faire uh, mousetrap, uh, because we won't have that in particular, but we'll have other family attractions. Uh, so I think I'll wrap up with that, but uh, if you guys have any questions, I think I have a few more minutes, uh, and I am happy to answer anything you'd want. Thank you, my cousins.